to say the day I'm recording this is two years since I set up um, hey Rash, my campsite warning channel hits over 5,000 subs and right we are on a day off a bit of a light in Rash a walk a couple of cups of coffee and it's happy birthday to the campsite warden channel which I set up on this day I've forgotten the date well, what's the date I can't see the date the 28th of June 2021 22, so it's two years old and I just passed um, well we're past 5,000 subs as well which is like wow brilliant um, the reason why I set up the campsite warden channel was at that point there was uh, a couple of wardens about that were doing YouTube but the videos were very few and far between um, of the role of being a campsite warden basically so I'd already been vlogging for a couple of years before that on my own personal channel so that's why there's a bit of a, a, a mismatch of old videos on campsites that I worked on in the past and I thought you know wouldn't it be great to actually have a dedicated campsite warden channel um, and then it's about a year ago, just over a year ago, I then started to decide to, um, well, what you see now basically, start doing regular, virtually, every day, managing to get content out on daily vlogs, which has been sometimes very hard to do, sometimes easy to do, because you never know what you're going to talk about. Um, so yeah, two, two years, 5,000 subscribers, so roughly speaking, 2,500 subs a year is what it's... Uh, comes comes in at if uh, if my math is correct so we're on a bit of a warm day and as I say I'm just out walking the girl I'm just going to I am going to nip into the office in a minute just to double check everything's all okay with Mark um, and then into Alford back to the dealer where I bought my car from because we've got some problems uh, which we need to um, go and have a chat about so wish me luck on that to the campsite and cars booked back in for Monday again so it was in Monday just gone to do a wheel bearing and there's definitely something wrong with the rear drive shaft when you put the car into reverse and put left lock on it's not half knocking so whether that's just something as simple as a boot rubber or something like that or something more serious we're going to have to wait and see going in a straight line it's all right but uh but yeah you you put it in reverse and it does not half knock and so I'm going to now go back and see Russia, who was in the garden, and possibly get out for a couple of hours and see where um, see where today takes right, us. So I think I'm going to get out with Russia for an hour. I'm going to go down to Wallabank Beach, which is up the road from Anderby Creek, which is uh, another dog-friendly beach all year round. And I've just been having a word with JP, um, who's staying on the ca on the site with us for I think a week. Um, so I'm going to have a catch up with him when I get back and all being well later I'm going to go and put my trail cams out as well but what I'm going to do now is get Rasha into the car and uh, go and have a little bit of a walk and give Rasha a bit of a leg stretch and um, try and see whether there's a bit of a sea breeze it's so uh, so warm this afternoon and so we've got some people on the site with us who are waiting for a, a Tesco delivery right let's grab the dog we'll try and get you booked in next week because you need your nails cut in. Some little uh, shine. You've got very, very sensitive nails, haven't you, Rash? Right. Why don't you walk on the beach, Rasha? Go and cool down. Hmm? Walking on the beach. I like you in the back of the car. Right, Good so here we are yeah. with Rasha. And we're at the Wallabank Beach and Car Park. Um, so one of a series of flooded clay pits that are now natural reserves. Place to repair the sea banks after the 1953 floods. Rome bank. Submerged forest. After the last ice age, sea levels were lower and much of the nature is covered with trees. Sea level toes. So if you go careful, submerged forest remains between Walla Bank and Anderby Creek. So here's Anderby, you've been with us before. We went to Hut Off the other day, and I'm now just here. So, if you do come, bear in mind this is not suitable for high 
vehicles you've got a 6.7 foot 1.95 meter height barrier and it is there's no machine here neither you have to put the a poker app on your phone uh, once that's set it's fairly straightforward and then there is car parking obviously I'm just here and picnic benches so we're took quite low so it's um it's a little bit sheltered and I dare say once we get up onto the main beach it's gonna get a little bit breezier and I love things like this So wildflower, um, yeah, there's a lot of authorities and councils, especially back at home, you've got people moaning about things not looking pretty, but the bees and the birds, the wildlife need things like that, especially with pollination. There is a path you can walk going that way. There is another route to the beach up here, but we're gonna go the main way and see where we get to from there just off the main road there and you come down a bit of a dirt track here we are I'm gonna say car park height barrier and onto the beach here so it's got some people in front of me I'll let them go a little bit ahead and we're gonna give Russia a little bit of a leg stretch onto the beach and then we'll have a sit down Russia can't we mm, you have a bit, bit of a sniff on everything you old girl hey good girl come on and again I'm going to end up with sandy me socks, aren't I? It's one of them sandy, sandy beaches. Come out and straight onto the beach. Oh, it's dog friendly as well. Uh, yeah, sorry, dog friendly as well. Always a bonus. Not exactly a, a blue sky day, but it's incredibly warm. Very, very warm. I thought it'd be breezy and there's no wind at all. Uh, obviously very popular with horse riders, a lot of uh, horse dung everywhere. And very gentle waves. Right, Russia doesn't like the water but we're going to have a, a walk down a little bit and then we're going to have a sit down for 10 minutes or so. Come on, Russia. Let's go. Good girl. Right, beautiful, a bit cooler for you Russia, yeah, uh, back to the car 
and back to the site. Might even have an ice cream when we get back. And talking of milestones, so as I say, the day I'm recording this is two years since I set up um, hey, Rash, my campsite warning channel. Hit over 5,000 subs. And Russia, the roof um, at home is now complete. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to insert some video clips, what Sandra has sent from back at home after all this stress and duration of getting a new, um, our, our, no, a new roof, our roof retiled, I should say, rather than a whole new roof. So here's Sandra with some video clips taken back at home over the last few days. Good evening. The sun is setting. It is midsummer's day. It's all happening over here. Electric's tripped. Rufus phoned me at work. I was at work. I couldn't do anything. Anyway, I think they've kind of muddled through. I've managed to finally reset the electrics and my daughter's just arrived. So before she does. Ruth. It's not quite finished, but it's getting there. So we have a quick look in the back garden as well. And we do still have froglets, lots and lots of froglets. Yeah. Slowly growing. Doing pretty well. Oh. And um, oh. With the roof, they are making progress. Starting to put on the, what's the word? I want to say ridge tiles, but I don't know if that's quite the right word. But anyway, the edge bits. So hopefully, certainly by next week, it'll be complete. As we've had quite a lot of heavy rain in this period, so it's really slowed down the progress of the work. But uh, they are getting there. Exciting. Well, that was one flipping busy week. Anyway, it's Friday. I'm home. Just had a quick check on the house before I go over to Mum's. Um, the main roof is finished. The scaffolding will be coming down on Sunday, apparently, and there's a little bit left to finish tomorrow, which is the uh, tiling over the bay windows, over the, over the front windows. Can hopefully see okay. Um, so not um, not quite finished yet, but anyway, um, <laughs> the end's in sight. Nearly in sight. Hopefully by next week we'll be all done. That would be great. It's been a, a lot to juggle keeping this all on the road and. Make sure mum's okay and full week, full week at work as well. It's been really hectic. Yeah. Anyway, chill time. Good morning. It's quite early, so I'm sorry I'm not going to raise my voice because it's very early in the morning. I'm told the scaffolding should be coming down today after our roof work. I'm nosy. So I'm going to go have a quick look before they take it down. Let's see what's up there. So this is as far as I dare go. And this is the closest I'll ever get to a roof in my life.
May she hold up extremely well to all the storms that are heading our way. Looks like they've done a good job. Okay, so for those of you that need me to speak up, I'm speaking up now. And the reason I didn't speak up before is it's very early Sunday morning. And literally, I've only just done this in time, but the scaffolding company have just come to take down my scaffolding because obviously the, the main part of the roof's finished now. And I've literally just got back down, got back into my house and the scaffold has rolled up very early actually. So they must need the scaffolding for another job, I'm guessing. Yeah, so um hope you enjoy my little bit of footage of the roof. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of okay, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Health and safety head on, I'm like, hmm. But it's, yeah, it did the job anyway. And everyone is fine, it's the main thing. But, um, but yeah, the roof up there's looking pretty smart. And um, probably the first and only time I'll ever get to be that close to our roof. <laughs> See you later. Scaffolders have an interesting technique for getting the, the clamps down. They just, um, Lob them in the buckets from on high. <laughs> anyway, poor garden. Hope it survives. Ish. Well, this is rather unfortunate. So, with everything going on, I actually felt quite unwell yesterday so I didn't get up into the loft until now. The scaffolding came down this morning and it looks like we might have a little bit of an issue around the back of the chimney breast area. So there should be membrane on there so I'm not quite sure what's happened there. I'm a little bit concerned about that. I'll have to contact the roofer and seek advice on that. So near the end as well. Well, so I'm back in the loft again. And I had been outside, started to tidy up the garden. It's bin day tomorrow, so I'll get the front hedge cut, get some of the weeds up out the front, start tidying up finally. Now I've got a bit of the garden back and everything. And I had to stop because there's been more thundery rain. So I'm back in the loft again because uh, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to see how we're holding up. So pleased to say it's all pretty dry up here. No obvious sign of anything getting through. And the builders are coming back tomorrow they're just going to reassure me that it should look as it does so hopefully it will and um, I just was querying there's just a slight gap where you would have thought there might be a bit of tile and anyway so they're going to check that tomorrow before I go to work so that's great um, and yeah so this is the first time I've been up in the rain with tiles as well as membrane with the new roof so so far so good um, so at least it was a good opportunity to check we're all doing well. So here we are, up in the roof, finally, all the tiles are on, no longer got light shining through. We know it's dry because we've had, in the course of this process, we've had uh, at least one massive thunderstorm, we've had a couple of very heavy rain days and it's all stayed dry inside so um, it's obviously very grateful for all the hard work from the roofers that have been working on this job for the last couple of weeks um, you know it's just <laughs> been a little bit nerve-wracking at times but that's just yeah me um, and then the little mystery which I'm going to try and sort of explain so I just really wanted to know how it is 
that in this one spot in that corner we've got tile a bit up here a bit up there that's the lead so this is going against the um chimney breast chimney area so i kind of knew about the lead flashing and things but in this one spot um so that there's a tile going over allegedly well anyway <laughs> It's, it's kind of, yeah, sort of something there. Anyway, apparently, as far as it goes, the light that you can see isn't coming from where it looks like it's coming from, but it's coming from kind of underneath. So, I mean, I know it's watertight because we've had all these like rainstorms and all sorts going on. Um, but I was just intrigued. I mean, it's, we can still see daylight there, but it's still watertight. So, so I think I drove our poor river potty asking to try and explain it, but I think I've got it now. Um, but as I say, nothing's coming in, so it's kind of fine. But I was just like, but what's holding the tile on, and why can I see light, and how does it work? Anyway, so yeah. Anyway, so so that's the story of the chimney bit, and um, yeah. End of it, well, yeah, a bit of an end of an era. So, the say the roof tiles that came off, they were, yeah, more than um, 70 years old. So, hopefully, this one will hold up as long. So, uh, yeah, fresh start for the roof. Onwards and upwards. Right, so, progress with the roof. What do you think? Right, I'm going to wrap this one off and uh, look after yourselves, guys. Mm -hmm.